You hear so many things today from so many places about finances and about prosperity. Does God really care about our finances? There is an old song we used to sing and I would sing it for you if I could still sing. But it is, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We all have stories in our life, don't we? And this day, I would like to share with you a story in my life. We've all been going through strange times and situations happening in our lives these days. I don't speak to anyone that isn't going through something, but I want you to know today our God is faithful. We have these things that come into our, into our lives, and there will be those that will stand with us and encourage us along the way, and then there will be those other ones that will come into our lives, and they will uh, seemingly take up more time to tell us why God won't do it today and why we shouldn't expect this and don't get our hopes up. How many of you have ever heard that? Don't get your hope up because if we get our hope up, we might have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and we don't want anybody to have um, unusual hope or, or, or get their hopes up. But I'm here today to encourage you today and to tell you it's okay to get your hope up. It is okay to hope and believe for these things. But all of these things, all of these stories in your life and my life have worked together to bring us to where we are today and have made us who we are today. Today, I would like to share with you part of my story, which is really his story. I'm, uh, the last several weeks, the word history has been so interesting to me because I think our history is really about his story. And I never hear the word without thinking his story. So I am going to share one with you today to bring all the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, because without him, I have known for many years, without him, I can do no thing. But with him, I can do all things. This is a story that I didn't want to let out for a long time because it was an embarrassing thing to me when it happened. But in the early 200s, the mortgage company <clears throat> that held our church mortgage called the church one day to tell us they were calling our loan in 10 days. Our property consisted of a building and 20 acres and they were calling our loan within 10 days. And all we needed to come up with to keep that from happening was $400,000. Well, I don't know about you. I don't know about most places, most places. Now, there are a few places that 400,000 would not seem to be a problem. But for us, it was a problem. I would have had difficulty in that day raising 40,000 in 10 days, and they wanted 400,000. And as I talked with the banker, I told him, we don't owe you anything. We are up to date in all of our payments. We are keeping our part, and what is the problem? What could we do to keep from this, this from happening? And the banker told me, said, go check your papers. Your papers say that I can call your loan at any time to be called within 10 days. And I checked our papers, and sure enough, it was there. But it was in real fine print. The banker also told me that I shouldn't have a problem about this because he was not only calling my church loan, he was calling three or four other church loans. He was going to put churches out of business. 
when I asked him he, if there was anything we could do, and my heart is pounding and I'm in despair at that moment, he answered me almost with a smirk, there is nothing you can do. And I said, well, I guess we need a miracle from God then. And his answer to that was, that won't even help you at this point. I am going to sell you off of the courthouse steps. As I hung up the phone with my heart heavy and not understanding what was going on, before I hung up the receiver of that phone, I held it up and I said, God, you heard those words. And I immediately recognized God in that situation because if God wasn't in that situation, there was no hope whatsoever. And immediately thoughts filled my mind. What are people going to say? And what are people going to do? And people did. And people said, I don't, I didn't want anyone to know about that. I did not want anyone to know the bank was going to foreclose on us because to me, the word foreclosure brought shame. And I was just so embarrassed by the whole thing. But you know how bad news travels. And that news traveled quickly to friends and people I didn't even know all across the United States of America. I complained to God about that. I said, God, I'm so embarrassed and, and, and look at all of this that's going out about me and my integrity and my church and the integrity of my church. And God showed me a picture of a diamond being shown. And if you've ever bought a diamond or if you've ever gone and looked at diamonds, generally what they do, they will lay a piece of black velvet down and then they will put the diamond on top of that because the black, the darkness shows the brightness. And God indicated to me that the blackness and the darkness of the shame and everything I was feeling was going to be the backdrop to the thing that God was going to do. God's glory was going to so shine forth out of that deep, dark hurting that was going on with me and my church. He assured me it was going to do well and God was going to get the glory. One friend called me in for quite a while, basically raked me over the coals. <clears throat> I was asked, what was I thinking about? I was asked, didn't I also sign the checks? I was also asked, what in the world have you done? Because a bank just wouldn't do that unless you've done something wrong. But I want to tell you, God had a plan. It was beyond anything I could have ever imagined. It was beyond anything I could have dreamed of or prayed for or believed. I, no way could I have ever been able to think of such a thing. On a Sunday, the Sunday before the foreclosure was to start on Monday, I had preached at the church, preaching on the faithfulness of our God. We can trust God. We can believe God. If God said it, you can take it to the bank, literally. And I preached those words. I went to lunch. I came home. I still had my Bible in my hand and my pocketbook. And as I came in my door, my phone was ringing. I reached over and picked up the, the phone. And another friend called. And in less than five minutes, she said, Jean, what's going on? I said, well, we're in trouble. The bank has called our loan. Oh, when's it due? I said, tomorrow. She said, how much is it? I said, 400000 She had heard about this through another party. I had never contacted either one of these friends. And she said, well, dear, why don't you just go to bed and take a nap? 
$400,000 will be in your bank in the morning. And it was. She had gone into her elders after she heard about my situation. And in less than five minutes, she had said to her elders, Jean Chesser is in trouble. Do you know what she needs? And one of her elders spoke up and said, 400,000. And she said, that's right. And why 400,000? And they immediately said, give it to her. And this is the story. She was told by God to pay her building off in her property, which she's got a beautiful, beautiful piece of property. And she was told to pay it off by the end of that year by God. She felt in her spirit that's what God was saying to do. And their church had been able to raise everything but 400000 and the money just stopped at the 400000 And God spoke to her heart and said, if you will give Jean Chesser 400000 to pay off her church, I will make the then 800000 because it was the four hundred she hadn't been able to raise and the four hundred she was given me now made it 800000 I will make sure, God told her, I will bring the money in by the end of the year. This is August. We're four months from the end of the year. And God tells her, if you do this for Jean Chester, I will do this for you. And in faith, that church believed God and they paid the, our indebtedness off and God gave us a debt-free congregation. And from August to December 31st, God put money in her church and to this day she has told me, I don't know where the money came from, but by the end of December, the last Sunday of December in that year, she was able to burn their church note because God had done it for her. So two churches in that year were paid off and were debt free. We were able to sell 10 acres of our 20 acres for exactly 400,000. And in July of the following year, my elders and I made a trip to her church with her elders and we gave them back the 400,000 with which they were able to start even another ministry. So you see, there are times in our lives, it seems that there is absolutely no way. You could ask me, was fear, did fear arise in you at any time? And I will tell you, oh yes. Fear can be paralyzing at times. And there were some mornings I woke up and there would be a paralyzing fear upon me, but I'd have to go back to the Word of God. Fear is false evidence appearing real. It's not the truth of God. When fear comes in regarding our health, regarding our finances, regarding anything that belongs to us, to you or to me, when fear comes in, it's false evidence appearing real. It's not the truth of God's word. But when this fear would come in and try to paralyze me, God will bring, would bring truth out and he would tell me such things. And my God, she'll supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I remember the day that scripture became real to me. I was at a crossroads here in our city. I was at a stoplight. And as I made that turn left on that, at that light, I heard those words come to me just out of the blue that day. I will supply your need according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He did not say, I will supply your need and your need only according to your need. He said he would supply our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There was another scripture 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on to your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I want to tell you, when we acknowledge Jesus, when we lean on his word, all false evidence appearing real has to go at his word. There's another one, beloved, do not think it strange concerning this fiery trial. And that was a fiery trial. And don't think it strange concerning that as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And another scripture, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and amen. Praise God. We rejoiced greatly upon that black canvas that had been set, as it were, that our church was in foreclosure. God came in, and setting on top of that black canvas was the glory of God shining. Setting on top of that black canvas was the glory of God in ways that we could have never, ever ever imagined. There was absolutely no way. I didn't even know that pastor had that money. I had not even called that pastor for prayer. I had not said one thing to that pastor, but God did. Many times we're making our ways, but God will. Many times we're trying to dig ourselves out but God will. God gets the glory because you see, there is nothing that is impossible with God. I got a prayer request this week and the person was kind of tongue in cheek to begin with, but the prayer request said, I'm really in pain and I really need healing. Will you please pray for me? But please don't start praying until after five o'clock today. I'm reading a real good book and I don't, I have an excuse to stay on the couch and finish my book. So I don't really need the healing until after five o'clock this afternoon. And another prayer request, well, uh, I'd like for you to pray, but you know, this is going to take time. And there we've already set limitations on God's glory. I want to tell you, I'm ready to take all limitations off of God. I'm going through other situations even today as I sit here. But the same God that supplied that need exceedingly abundantly on the day that it was due Yes, many times it will come down to the very last moment, but God, but God. I want to encourage you today about God. That day it came down seemingly to the very last moment. The pastor that gave us that money and when she gave it to us, she gave it to us with no strings attached. She said, I'm giving you this 400,000, no interest, no payments. And God enlarged us to the point that we were able to give it back with the sale of the 10 acres of property we weren't using. So God had supplied, um, when you really look at it, we had bought that property, oh, 15 or 18 years before this happening. So God had already supplied our need 18 years <clears throat> before the need arose. We had the 10 acres to sell. 
So God will put things in place that you don't even know are in place or that I don't even know in place because God has a million ways to come through in our situation. Don't limit God today because nothing is impossible. And I tell that story today for the glorifying of the Lord Jesus Christ because it was God and God only that brought that miracle to pass. I tell you that today to encourage you, no matter where you are, no matter where I am, the word still works. God is still the author and the finisher of our faith. I encourage you today, turn your eyes upward instead of downward and inward, looking at the fear that's trying to overcome because our hope is in God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and our hope is in God. If he did it before, he'll do it again. And if he never did it before, he can still do it. God bless you today. May the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ lift you up. May you have encouragement that is flowing out of you now, that not only are you encouraged, you are going to be able to share encouragement with someone else because this is a river of life that's flowing. This is sea life. We're seeing life. We saw life come to pass in two churches being paid off in four months' time. We saw life over and over again. There's many, many stories I could tell you. But this today is for your encouragement and for the glory of God. May God shower you with his blessings. May God give to you super abundantly above all you can ask, think, pray, or even dream. You're still not in the realm where God is, and we can't dream high enough. We can't dream big enough. We can't believe him uh, too much. We can't hope too much because God is God, and nothing is impossible with our God. Bless you.